final systems check of an Apollo spacecraft. During the hours of the countdown, these men and this equipment will check the functioning of the many spacecraft systems. Systems which will guarantee the success of the Apollo lunar landing mission and the safety of the three Apollo astronauts. At the completion of system checks, the launch crew will take over. Final launch countdown will begin. But this Apollo spacecraft will never go to the moon. It is a test vehicle used to develop the final spacecraft. This computer room, this control room, are not at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, but at the North American Aviation Space Division in Downey, California. This test countdown is a part of a comprehensive engineering and development effort on the Apollo lunar spacecraft a part of the effort to perfect a reliable and capable spacecraft before the first manned Apollo flight. This is a part of the dress rehearsal for Project Apollo. This concludes the spacecraft portion of the countdown in Complex 1. Complex 2, take over... Intently interested station. in the countdown is the president of the Space and Information Systems Division, Harrison Storms. The story of the production and the development of the Apollo Saturn hardware, in reality, is the prologue of going to the moon itself. In many ways, it is a dress rehearsal, using stand-in astronauts and dummy spacecraft. Facilities such as you see here will be used to check out the space capsules and the booster components to ensure the reliability necessary in order to get the man to the moon. For example, each spacecraft will receive a thorough checkout and inspection in this large clean room here in Downey before they are shipped to Florida for launch. The story of Apollo is a story, too, of dedicated effort by hundreds of thousands of men and women in industry and government facilities throughout the United States. It's a matter of great pride to each of us that we are meeting our production milestones. And only through these extensive ground tests and development programs can we assure a successful mission for the three astronauts. Apollo is a historic mission. Never before in history has there been such a comprehensive and thorough program to develop and prove every facet of a vehicle before the first manned flight. These Apollo spacecraft are not spacecraft at all, but test vehicles or boilerplate spacecraft. They are the size of Apollo, the same shape, the same weight, but these test vehicles have been used to develop and prove the many phases of Apollo design before completion of the first actual spacecraft. This is a part of the Apollo dress rehearsal, a rehearsal in full scale that will continue until Apollo goes to the moon. This test vehicle represents a fraction of the investment in man hours and dollars which would be needed to complete an actual spacecraft but it has proven the reliability of the Apollo Earth Landing System parachutes as thoroughly as any complete spacecraft could and helped to perfect that system in test after test. Other Apollo test vehicles have rehearsed the landing of Apollo. different landing angles and speeds to perfect the final touchdown. Similar tests using fully instrumented anthropomorphic dummies as stand-ins for the astronauts help to determine the effects of the landings on the Apollo crew.
The interrelation of tests in Apollo development is shown in the perfecting of the launch escape system. This system will rescue the astronauts from any emergency condition prior to launch or during the first critical moments of powered flight. A powerful rocket motor will hurl the Apollo command module out of danger so that it may be lowered safely by the already proven Earth landing system. If a sudden emergency should occur on the launching pad, the astronauts must be removed immediately from the danger zone. The Apollo command module would be pulled high into the air, away from the pad, high enough for parachute descent. Its job completed, the escape system would be jettisoned so that the parachutes might deploy. Then, the command module and crew would be lowered gently to Earth. Another contingency to be provided for is the unlikely possibility of a booster explosion while the spacecraft is still in Earth's atmosphere. Here, a little Joe too plays the part at the Saturn booster stage. The booster pushes the test spacecraft higher and higher from the Earth, faster and faster. A beautiful launch. Then, suddenly, the ground crew triggers a violent explosion and the test begins. Again, the launch escape system pulls the spacecraft clear of danger. An onboard camera gives us an astronaut's eye view in slow motion as the launch escape system is jettisoned. The camera, mounted on the spacecraft, gives a preview of the moments of waiting as the drogue chute slows the descent. Then the feeling of relief as the main chutes deploy to lower the command module to a safe landing. By the use of these test vehicles, built rapidly and at comparatively low cost, Many phases of the Apollo spacecraft have been developed simultaneously, proven in these rehearsals and incorporated into the final design. In this Apollo test vehicle, three human beings spend days in the environment of outer space, rehearse the efficiency of the environmental control system and the atmosphere of spacecraft living without once leaving the Earth. The command module is mounted in this vacuum bell, and the operation of many systems are tested in a hard vacuum similar to the void of outer space. Design of the Apollo spacecraft command module has been dictated to a great degree by the needs of the three astronauts who will comprise the Apollo crew. These stand-in astronauts play a major part in the development of crew systems for Apollo. These men are from industry and government, engineers, technicians, sometimes pilots, who bring their knowledge, talents, and experience to bear on Apollo crew requirements. Spacesuit design, couch design, arrangement of the command module interior, all contribute to the efficiency and comfort of the crew. Are the controls recognizable, comfortably reached, easily manipulated? Is the instrument panel readable and instantly understandable? Does it tell a pilot what he needs to know? Does the instrument grouping eliminate confusion? Does the crew have freedom of movement to accomplish the many daily tasks? Navigation is critical during the flight. Onboard star sightings will be made, experiments performed, adjustments made. Do the confines of the command module permit accomplishment of each movement, each task? Sometimes the answer to task accomplishment has been step-by-step -step procedures developed through trial and error and repetition. There is a fourth dimension to the Apollo flight in that for most of the mission, the astronauts will be in a zero G or weightless condition.
In this KC-135 flying test bed, other stand-in astronauts work in the weird environment of zero gravity. As these early scenes show, chaos can result when weightless men and unsecured equipment float aimlessly in a slow motion kind of confusion. Experience gained by rehearsals in this actual weightless environment has been applied to the design of spacesuits, crew couches, and to the development of other specialized equipment. As a result of these rehearsals, zero gravity will be no hazard on the Apollo flight. The astronauts will be able to relax and enjoy it. The three astronauts are the focal point of the Apollo mission. Man is going to the moon to touch its surface, to see and explore its mysteries. This dress rehearsal is essential to the success of that mission. Cape Kennedy, Florida is the jumping off place for Apollo, the firing line. Here, the dress rehearsal takes on sharper significance as some of the test vehicles are prepared for actual launch into space. Many of these men will make the final adjustments on the Apollo lunar spacecraft. We'll check and adjust and recheck the spacecraft for the last time before it carries three men into space for a flight to the moon. The launch vehicles which boost the Apollo test vehicles into Earth orbit are early models of the giant Saturn booster. These dress rehearsal launches are another step toward man rating or establishment of a level of reliability which will assure the safety of a crew of astronauts. These tests help to establish compatibility between spacecraft and booster stages test jettison of the launch escape system following a successful launch. And they give a dramatic preview of the scale of launches to come. This Apollo test vehicle is full scale. The booster stages are approximately one half the height of the booster that will launch the Apollo spacecraft toward the moon. This part of the Apollo dress rehearsal is a major step toward the achievement of that giant spacecraft and booster combination upon which the lives of three astronauts and the goal of an entire nation can ride with assurance. As you watch the final moments of this launch countdown, which is now history, the time of man's first flight to the moon draws steadily nearer. The actual Apollo spacecraft are being built which will carry three astronauts into space. Their design and their capability is proven by the Apollo dress rehearsal. The giant booster stages which will make up the final Saturn launch vehicle are being completed. This is the S2 second stage booster of the final Saturn S5. This test launch gives us a brief glimpse of the excitement that will be present, the historic significance of that moment when three astronauts board the Apollo spacecraft for flight to the moon. That moment will mark the beginning of an era of exploration toward the widest horizons which have ever beckoned a man. These people are bringing that era ever closer. They are helping prove man's capability to explore these new horizons through this dress rehearsal for Project Apollo. Seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, zero.